What's up folks, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we're gonna do a build guide for a budget-based gaming PC that's under the $400 mark. Specifically, we're gonna concentrate on AMD specific parts. And I think the best possible configuration you can get at this price point is probably gonna start with the AMD Athlon X4860K. This is a quad-core chip that can easily be overclocked to over four gigahertz using the stock cooler. And we're gonna pair this with the R9 380 from Gigabyte. So using these two parts, I think we can make a very powerful and compelling system at this price point that will not only be versatile for any day-to-day -day task that you're gonna throw at it, but excellent for playing games at full high details at 1080p. And we're gonna obviously do a full-on build guide and do some benchmarking later on in this video so we can give you guys a little taste of what this PC can do. So if you're interested, let's get right into this thing. Now, when building any budget-based system, it's really important to select your parts as wisely as possible to do as much research as well. And this is going to be an AMD-based system, and AMD is really good at giving you a lot for your money. And I think the best possible CPU for the money that's going to bottleneck your GPU the least amount is going to have to be the Athlon X4 860K. Now, this is actually a processor that's been out for quite a number of years now, and even though it's a little bit dated and you have newer APUs, that are far better in terms of uh, integrated graphics performance. But since we're going to use a discrete graphics card, we actually want a processor that's going to give us the most amount of threads at the highest clock speeds possible in order to make sure that the uh, GPU is not bottlenecked by the CPU performance. And even right now in 2016, I think the 860K on the AMD side is the best bet. It's a full uh, quad core CPU that's uh, clock stock speed is around 3.7 gigahertz and we can easily over clock it way beyond the four gigahertz mark even with the stock cooler and that's exactly what we're going to do to get the best performance now the platform is going to be the fm2 plus so a good motherboard is this one over here this is the gigabyte f2a 68 hm this is a micro atx board has usb3 functionality as well as a sata 3 functionality so it has all the modern needs that you're going to need for a computer for the next couple of years so it's an excellent platform to start out with and it comes at a pretty reasonable price as well. Now in terms of the all important graphics card, we're going to be using the R9 380. This one comes from Gigabyte. This is the non-X version which comes at a more competitive price point. Should be well under $200 and I think you definitely have a lot of value over here. You have 4 gigabytes of video memory and in some instances it's going to be faster than the GTX 960 from Nvidia. Now since we're going to keep things as basic as possible in order to get the best gaming performance for the most money, we're not going to spend a lot of money on RAM. We only need really 4 gigabytes to start out with. We're using DDR3 memory that's clocking around 1600 megahertz from PNY and uh, this could be had for uh, just under $20 which is pretty competitive. And the same thing goes for our hard drive. We're just going to use a mechanical disk, uh, the 500 gigabytes to keep things as cheap and as simple as possible. And for our power supply, we're going to be using the Apivia 500 watt a power supply. Uh, can't again get a modular power supply or one that has good efficiency but this should do us uh, just perfectly fine with our configuration. And for the case uh, there's actually a lot of options but one of my favorite budget oriented case is the Roswell SRM01. This comes at around $30. It's a very nice sleek looking case has a black uh, overall finish inside and out and it looks a lot more expensive than it really is but it's a fantastic micro ATX case and it's going to do an excellent job in terms of housing all of our parts. Now all in all when we add up the sum total of all the parts we get a grand total of $395 dollars now keep in mind that this is the pricing that i paid uh, there might be different deals going on there might be different exchange rates this is based on the current pricing of the parts that i selected all these parts are new you are going to save a little bit of money if you can find them used of course now with all that done let's get into actually building the system all you're going to need is a phillips head screwdriver and of course you want to be free from any electrostatic discharge so once we're all ready go ahead and grab your cpu and we're going to install it directly onto the motherboard by lifting the retention arm on the socket itself and you can see that on the top right hand corner there's a triangle that will match to the uh, triangle on the socket motherboard area itself and you can drop it straight into the socket for the perfect alignment. Once that is done you can go ahead and lock the retention arm thereby securing the CPU to your motherboard and now's a probably good time to install the stock cooler. For detailed instructions on how to install it uh, check back to the manual that came with the processor but it's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, the 
AMD chips don't require a backplate. They simply bolt on and attach to the standoff areas located on uh, both sides of the socket itself. And of course on the stock cooler, if it's a new cooler, you should have some thermal compound pre-installed so you don't have to worry about that. Once you've mounted your cooler, you can go ahead and plug in the power for your CPU fan. Next, we can take our single stick of RAM and insert it into the RAM slot labeled DDR3-1. And moving forward, we're going to now install our PSU directly into the case. And on this case, it actually goes at the top and it's mounted via four Phillips head screws, either provided with the PSU or with the case. Continuing forth, we're now going to install the back motherboard plate for the inputs and outputs. And you want to make sure that the orientation is correct based on the way that your motherboard is going to fit inside the case. Next, we're going to install six standoff screws for the motherboard mounting points. Once you have those in, you're ready to gently lower down the motherboard onto those standoff screws and uh, it'll, they'll help you align the motherboard properly. And you can then go ahead and uh, mount everything down with the six Phillips screws that came with the case. Now it's time to do all that fun stuff which is uh, installing the front LED switches as well as the power switches, all those little connectors. Refer to the uh, motherboard manual for the exact configuration for all those little connectors, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. And uh, you can go ahead and connect your USB uh, connections as well as your front panel audio connections here. After that, it's now time to bring everything to life with some power. So we're going to connect our main 24-pin uh, motherboard connection as well as our 8-pin CPU power connection. And while we're connecting all that stuff might as well also connect the uh, case fans to the motherboard connectors labeled system fan and moving on to my favorite part of any pc build and that's installing the graphics card uh, to the motherboard so we're going to remove pci express covers on the case that corresponds to the expansion slot that we're going to install the gpu onto and then we can simply lower down the graphics card directly onto the pci express connector on the motherboard and then we can uh, just use one phillips head screw to secure everything into place furthermore now we can take the the 8-pin uh, PCI power connector that comes from our power supply and connect the power to our GPU. And winding down the build, we're just going to finish it off by mounting our hard drive directly into the case. Then we're going to grab a SATA cable from the motherboard box and connect it to a SATA port on the motherboard to the hard drive itself. And then we're going to give it some SATA power as well. And now since we have successfully installed all the hardware and our PC is uh, looking good and complete, we can now install all of our software and start configuring our hardware for the best possible gaming performance. Now when it comes to overclocking our 860K, it's pretty simple. Just go to the advanced frequency settings and then advanced CPU core settings. And I set my CPU clock ratio at 43, giving us 4.3 gigahertz frequency. And we also want to go to the voltage settings and up the CPU voltage to plus 0 0.018 volts. Uh, this setting over here, based on my experience, is going to give you the best results possible for my particular CPU and uh, the stock cooler. Now obviously if you want upgrade the cooler you can probably uh, get a little bit better performance but this is definitely a good sweet spot on Cinebench R15 we get a score of about 347 points on the overclock and on the stock frequency which is around 3.7 gigahertz that can turbo up to 4 gigahertz we get about 299 so a decent a jump up from stock settings over here now, overclocking the R9 380 is pretty simple if you use MSI's afterburner and I basically set the core frequency of the GPU to just under 1100 megahertz and the memory clock is just around 1600 megahertz and uh, you can do a little bit of tweaking on your graphics card but uh, this is what kind of works uh, best for our configuration right now and now let's actually get into our benchmark results so that way you can see exactly what this AMD machine can do in terms of actual gaming performance.
But really other than that guys, that's really it. I'm overall very satisfied with the build. Again, for this price point, there's really not a lot that you can get that can uh, deliver better performance than this if you're using uh, AMD specific parts. Now, we're actually gonna have another build guide that counteracts this one using an Intel based CPU, specifically the G3258 and an NVIDIA GTX 960 from Zotec. And both systems will be around $400. And obviously this is a complete build guide for the AMD based system. We're gonna have a separate build guide for that NVIDIA and Intel based system and then we're going to have a third video in this series where we kind of compare everything and find out which one is actually the best one. In most circumstances, they're going to be quite similar. Some games will favor one system over the other, but again, stay tuned and check the description. Those videos might be already published by the time you watch this video. But thank you so much for your support. Check the links in the description down below for everything we talked about, and we'll see you later. Take care.